It's been four months since I started this new account, and I've shared every step of the journey with you all. Now is probably going to be the final episode of this series, and that's because I finally managed to beat every single endgame content. 36 Star of Forgotten Hall, 12 out of 12 Pure Fiction, 12 out of 12 Apocalyptic Shadow. I'll show you guys, because the last video, you guys only saw the Forgotten Hall clear. I'll put some clips of the Pure Fiction and Apocalyptic Shadow clear at the end of the video, but I want to jump into the account review first. I also want to just verify my free-to-play status because for some people, they care about that, and I just want it on the record. So I started this game May 28, 2024, which was after the anniversary, meaning if I go to the shop now, You'll see that I have all the top-up bonuses still available. You'll see that I don't have any of the supply passes. And as for battle pass, that's not battle pass. You'll see that I don't have it unlocked either. And the reason I did this account, like this new account series, is to try to show people that it's really, really easy to be free to play and clear endgame content. I think it's really fun to play these games free to play. And I love it when other creators are also free to play, but I don't recommend free to play players to actually build a lot of the four star units because it's just inefficient. Your resources are limited. Like for example, why would you build someone like Natasha if you had a Venturin or Fushren? Why would you build someone like Hook if you had Firefly? Or why would you build someone like Wind Don Hung if you had Fei Xiao? It's just, it doesn't make sense to me to do four star only clears when there's clearly better options that are more efficient. And also a lot of the 4-star clears have these characters at E6. And an E6 4-star, in my mind, is harder to get than an E0 5-star unit. Now, a lot of people don't agree with me, but I've been playing Genshin for 3-4 years now. I still don't have a C6 Fischl. I still don't have a C6 Shangling. I still don't have a C6 Bennett. Like, I've played Genshin way longer than I played Honkai Star Rail. I still don't have C6s of a lot of the best units. So it just doesn't make sense to me when people use C6 4 stars and be like, oh, but if you played the game for two years, you should have them. I don't have a lot of the C6 characters, even in a game that I've played multiple, multiple years in. So that's, that's my little rant before I go on to my showcase. I know a lot of people don't agree with the sentiment, but I think free-to-play players should build 5-star characters. That's just my opinion. All right, so here's my roster. And as you can see, most of the characters I've built up are actually five star characters, even though I'm free to play. While most of the four star characters are not fully leveled. Now that's not because I don't like them and they're definitely usable. If you like a character like Luca or Gornyphon, you can definitely build them up, right? They're not awful characters. In the right situation, they can actually clear content for you. It's just those resources that you're spending as a free-to-play player, they're very limited to begin with, and they would be much better spent on more effective units. Of the characters that I've pulled for and built, my biggest regret is Sparkle. And that's not because Sparkle sucks, it's because Sparkle didn't actually fit my account. Now, I initially pulled for Sparkle to go with Shrey Yi, but the problem was, or maybe it's a skill issue, but it, it just never worked. Shrey Yi is not strong enough or i don't play her right it's just maybe, maybe she's built poorly but i i thought this was a decent ratio it just didn't work and then she doesn't all work with any of my other characters like clara it's not the best pairing granted i i pulled sparkle before i got my first copy of ting yun so that's why ting Yun's not really leveled up she i just recently got her and also nowadays with hunt march 7th released a lot of the times, I just find myself using Hunt March 7th over Sparkle. So, yeah, Sparkle was a bit of a regret. As for the other character that I kind of regret building, it's Clara. And Clara helped me in a lot of situations. The reason I sort of regret her is because in the game modes that she works in, she does work. But Apocalyptic Shadow is kind of anti-synergistic with how Clara works. I've done this rant before, so I won't do it now, but the fact that she doesn't work in one of the main game modes 
it, it kind of sucks because as your first few characters that you build up you want them to be super versatile and usable in all the game modes and i just don't think clara fits that because while she can work in certain mocs that are okay for her like the hule boss actually is fine for clara because it's physical weak and hits a lot of times so clara can actually get a lot of attacks off and in pure fictions where there is physical weakness clara is also very good it's just Apocalyptic Shadow, she's a disaster. If you run Clara in Apocalyptic Shadow, you're either trolling or you're the biggest Clara main ever because she she is not made for that game mode and it, it, it sucks. Now for the standard banner character that I'd recommend over Clara, I would say Himiko is at this moment in time probably the standard banner character that aged the best. She works exceptionally well in pure fiction and then if you build Super Break Himiko, she will work in Fire Week MOC stages. And her kit also works very well in Apocalyptic Shadow because Apocalyptic Shadow is all about breaking. And her kit is very synergistic with breaking. She's not like the best character in the game, but she's very, very good. Sparkle and Clara were my five star regrets, but there's also four star regrets that I have. And that's Serval. I thought Serval was going to be a viable character because I've heard from other people that, hey, Serval can be used in Super Break. She's actually not that bad. I tried using her and oh my god, she sucks. I, I tried building her Super Break. I tried building her crit. She does no damage. This was a huge waste of resources. On to the characters that I use all the time. So I have a Firefly Super Break team, which has been super super strong for me i know a lot of people aren't high on firefly socks anymore okay i'll i'll put it like this when someone like firefly first released how many content creators were glazing her to the moon right i saw so many videos calling her the next tier zero dps and then now if you look at those same creators those creators are now dogging on firefly calling her not so good fell off was never good and I, I just find that so annoying. And I think what they're trying to say is Firefly doesn't scale as well as other characters. Super Rake is sort of like Hyper Bloom in Genshin, where the floor is super high, but the ceiling is also relatively low. Like the more you invest into her team, you're not going to see as much improvement out of it. But you can get very, very good results with a very low investment. What I mean by that is my Harmony Trailblazer traces are barely leveled and for the longest time I had like level 12 relics on all the pieces. Ron May had like a level 12 relics. She still does and, and like there's still level 12 relics here and traces aren't even maxed. And then for Gallagher, his traces are also super low and some of his relics are also level 12. Like you can get away with this and still zero cycle the MLC. That's what I mean by super high, super high damage floor. But the problem is there's not much to min max because if I optimize all these stats, I won't see much of an improvement. It's not the same situation with characters like Acheron or Zeola. The more you invest into those characters, the more you're going to get out of it. So it's kind of weird where Firefly is a very, very good noob character because you don't need to put as much investment into her team and you'll get incredible results out of it. But you also won't be able to grow that team much further as you play more and more. Whereas with a character like Zeela, she might feel super awful at the start, but as you build her up stronger and stronger, you'll start feeling stronger and stronger with her too. So I personally am not the biggest break enjoyer on my main account. I don't have any break characters, but with Firefly, the fact that she can implant a weakness onto an enemy makes her very usable pretty much every single cycle of any endgame content just because, you know, you implant your own weakness, it doesn't matter what the enemy is. You implant weakness, you can do your job. Now, if they have enemies that make their toughness bar immune to damage, so like when they lock their toughness bar, that will be a case where Firefly will be useless. It hasn't happened yet, so for now she's still very usable. But I do want to pull for different characters in case that happens. 
So my Firefly is E0, S1, max out traces, and she's top 4% on Zeola land in terms of relics. She's not perfect, but she's definitely good enough for me. As for Ron May, I'm running slow Ron May with 257 break effect. She is E0 S1. I will be maxing this when I have time. And she has two piece, two piece with Von Wack. HMC is 190 break effect with an S3 Memories of the Past. Traces, I will level this up when I have time. Relics, four piece watchmaker, and he's E6. As for my sustain, it's sometimes Gallagher, it's sometimes Lingsha. For Gallagher, I have. Well, it, it depends. I, I change my relics around and I change my light cone depending on who's with who. Basically, whoever is on the break team gets this light cone, and then whoever is on the Robin team gets quid pro quo. And so I just switch them around a bit. Now for my Lingsha, she's E0, S0, and her light cone depends on who she was being played with. I want to level these up, but it's lower on the priority. And she basically has a lot of the Firefly hand-me-downs. Oh, but it depends, right? So in this situation, if she's with Robin, I build her with crit. So I have her on the crit pieces, but otherwise I would have her on a break break set. Ideally, I want characters to just have their own set, but when you don't have a lot of relics to begin with, you got to swap them around depending on who you play. So that's my super break team. It's done very well for me and I don't regret it. As for my other team, it's a Robin based team. So my Robin's on Nebranya Cone. I want to level these up. It's priority for me. She's on two piece attack, two piece attack, and she's E0. As for who she's usually run with, it's either Clara or Himiko as the DPS. If it's a quantum weak stage, I would have Shui in it too. And then Sometimes I also have Hunt March 7th. So those are kind of like the DPS characters that go with my Robin. So I'll go over Clara first. Clara is E0 S1. And I have this maxed out, but I don't really want to invest in her anymore because I, I rarely use Clara anymore. She was my early game character, but once I reached Apocalyptic Shadow, I, I just stopped using her because... Now I have Himiko built up. So Himiko's E0 S1. And she's also in the works. I do want intend to level her up all the way. And she's on four piece uh Grand Duke with two piece Duran. With a pretty good ratio. And then for Shui, she's on the Herda Light Cone with four piece genius and two piece salsado and then for march 7th i think my march is pretty pretty well built too 3k attack 137 speed cruising these are her traces oh well two piece attack and then some rainbow but you know i went sub stats first and i will level this up honestly can i level it up now no, I don't have enough. <laughs> and then Sparkle. My Sparkle is 161 speed on a Dance Dance Dance. But I also just got this light cone, so it's not leveled up yet. I also don't have enough materials to level it up. Basically, new player free-to-play struggles. Now, Herd is a character I use for pure fiction only. And so what that means is most of the time, her relics are on other people like Clara or Himiko. And then when I really need to use... Uh, Herda, I would then borrow those relics back onto her. So for now, she doesn't look very pretty because a lot of her stuff are on other characters. As for the rest of the characters, they're not really built. 
and I don't plan on building them until I've maxed out the main roster. So once I've maxed these all out, I will then start building characters like Tingyun, Jepard, and so on. But I need to max these out first. So Robin's traces, Ron May's traces, Ling Xiao's traces, Himiko's traces, like these are priority for me right now. And then when they're done, I can then focus on the other characters. Now for who I intend to pull for, I'm currently in a save mode. I will probably be skipping the rest of 2.6 and the rest of 2.7. None of the characters benefit my account too much. I know a lot of people will say, well, Fugue works for your super break team. But the problem is my super break team is already complete. Like, they're not struggling. So I don't see any reason to upgrade this team that's already doing really well for me. I'd rather find a character for Robin. So maybe a, a servant character in 3.x. So where I intend to take this account now that I've completed all the endgame content is I want to use this account to go for characters that I'm still interested in, but I otherwise would have skipped on my main account. So for example, we're heading to 3.x, which a lot of people say will be the introduction of a servant meta. And my main account will probably be skipping a lot of those characters unless there's one that works with Blade. So to fill that void, I have this account to pull for and test those servant characters. Your position. Let's improvise. In the mood for another beating? <laughs> Target. Let the show begin. Each blossom and incense ascends.
has its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Everything in this world is bleeding. You won't get away. Everything in this world is disorderly. You won't get away. Why is everybody silent? I told the truth, and you will. Disorderly noise. Has its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception.
agency is its desire to control the heavens, and I'm no exception. Everything in this world is bleeding. Made it felt kind to the film. I have some control. <laughs> Come on. It's 